Hello and welcome to another angle from Right Angled. Today we are joined by Natalia and uh, Vanessa from FORM. I study um, naturopath biomedicine. So during a year you get a full understanding on how your body works in a cellular level. Mm -hmm. But then I stopped that. Vanessa <laughs> went through like the whole course. It's another like two years of study. But like when it gets into like the real nitty gritty of like biochemics, it was just went right off my head, and now that's too much for me. <laughs> it actually gets better. I, I do think, it. yeah. Because it's the nitty gritty, but then the second year, third year, it's more about like nutrition. and. Yeah. But again, at the same time, you came back to it afterwards. It's not like as if you left it completely. You went, you did your comms degree, and you... Yes, and I studied communication like 15 years ago. But what got you back to the whole industry that you had kind of got away from okay okay so just to give a bit of context for the people listening um i used to work in pr so i worked in luxury and communications i studied communications back in brazil and i used to be a pr director working in the luxury business so for brands like land rover aston martin hublo tacoya dior but then I felt as a communicator, I was not really sharing a message that resonated with me. I was working with these car brands and I don't have a driving license. So I just went on a search to find out what I could do in the world that would make me happy, would make me useful and would pay my bills. And I knew that it was going to be something related with wellness because that's what I was passionate about. But I didn't know exactly what it was going to be. So I thought a good way to start was by educating myself. And as a plant-based diet had a transformative effect in the way I live, in my level of energies on how my brain operates, I decided that I was going to study nutrition because it helped me. But as I was just sharing, after done like a full year of naturopath biomedicine, and understanding how the body works in a cellular level, I thought continuing for like the next two years was going to be too much for me. And the side of the business that I like, it is spreading, spreading a message that is going to help people live more meaningful and healthy lives. And doing that from a business perspective, instead of doing that on a one-to-one -one basis or be advising people when they need a specific advice and that's why we have Vanessa here with us today who works with her she writes so if you go on inform that is our platform where we share content a lot of the nutrition content is done by her or Dr. Adam Collins who is our head of nutrition who has formulated our Okay, this is amazing. I just want to jump on one idea because you mentioned the inform and we had this discussion on Friday, actually, literally just Friday. Harry brought up one of your newsletters on the screen and he showed us the newsletter on what content you guys had on there. And I'm quite keen to know what's the reason behind tapping on lifestyle and fashion in your newsletters, given that a lot of the content that you would expect your brand to be writing about is all about nutrition. So I'm really keen to understand why, why fashion and why lifestyle? So Form was born out of the desire of elevating the concept of nutrition to be more than just what you put in your body, but how you nourish yourself. And a way of nourishing yourself, it is through information. And as part of our core mission, it is to provide information for people to decide what to do. And within the context of the supplement industry, four years before we launched it, if you think of a supplement brand, you tend to associate it with like bodybuilders and proteins or about like the gains and an industry that is not necessarily very accessible and relatable for a lot of people. And what we want to build with our products is that products that are attractive for people and as a solution for the busy lifestyle that we are all living 
we need to have convenient alternatives that we will allow us to have a quick and nutritious breakfast so we can get ready to work. And at the same time, we, we realize that we don't need to be defined by wellness and fitness, but wellness and fitness is part of our lifestyle. So with the content that we share, we want to cover all the aspects of what you're interested in life, not simply talk about porridge and pancakes. Amazing, like I literally had this theory and I actually shared it with, with Harry. Really interesting, you know, because we see this from our Google Analytics, you know, like the attributes and the things that your website visitors, any, anyone that have worked in marketing or have any kind of access to tools such as Google Analytics will understand that Google can provide you with information about your visitors that not a lot of platforms can really give you. And one of which is that we understood that our key visitors are the ones that are all about value shopping or online shopping or fashion and part of our content strategy have always been about what type of content should we come to our audience with that we know that would be of interest to them because that's their attributes these are their attributes these are the things that are really uh, interest them the most and it has been a pretty much of a struggle how could you really put your content the things that you want to promote through your channels which is the products that you have deliver it to your audiences whilst knowing that they have a wide range of other interests at the same time and what you guys have put together is impressive because it did not diverge away too much from your core offering but it was solidifying the brand itself as a lifestyle brand that has a lot of things that it could tap into which is outside wellness and bodybuilding as you mentioned so um so it, yeah it was pretty interesting it was pretty interesting and i just wanted to uh, know the reasoning behind it but amazing really well done on that so yeah before okay. i actually go into a lot of things I haven't tried your, 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 your products before, but Harry did, and he said really a lot about it. And thank you so much for bringing this as, uh, as a gift with you today. Um, so the ZZZs, it's something that really got my interest straight away because it has something to do with restorative sleep. So how did you come up with the idea about this one? Well, I can take the full credit for okay. coming up with that. Uh, but as I said, we have Dr. Adam Collins, who is the head of nutrition. And basically, what we want to do with product, it was to offer a natural way of helping people to sleep better. With form, it's all about encouraging and supporting performance. And sleep is the cornerstone. If we don't sleep well, we know that we're going to be in a bad mood. We know that our cognitive capacity will decline. We know we are probably more likely to crave um, sugar and bad food. We know that it's not good for our immune system. And we also realize that with the levels of anxiety and stress, people are struggling to sleep. One of the common solutions for uh, sleeping supplements that is not necessarily legally legal in the UK, but it's what people normally have, is melatonin. So melatonin is the hormone that is related with telling your body that it's time to wind down and sleep. But the problem is when you take these melatonin pills, you're basically blunting your body's own ability of producing melatonin. So you become addicted to it, it becomes dependent on an external source of melatonin. So what we did with Z's was to provide a formulation with the nutrition necessary for your body to produce melatonin. So it has 5-HTP from the Griffion seed that is a precursor of it's a, the neurotransmitter of you can correct me if I'm wrong, oops, <laughs> if I just say anything, then it's not right. But of serotonin. And serotonin yeah. is involved in the process of producing melatonin. Yeah. And it also has 
L-theanine and L-glycine that are common amino acids. So sometimes people are feeling like too nervous or they just need to calm down and that's what L-glycine and L-theanine does. It also has magnesium and magnesium allows your muscles and your body to relax so it's easy for you to sleep and also zinc and there is a lot of research um, telling that when you have like zinc, lack of zinc in your body actually uh, results on not a deep sleep. So basically by analyzing different research, looking at what it is that is lacking on people's nutrition that potentially are interfering in the quality of their sleep, we come up with Z's. And as I mentioned before, if you go on our website and you read the reviews, from people using it, it's really rewarding to come up with a product to make it available that has a transformational effect on people's lives. So you you have like reviews, and Vanessa can remind me because she's the one receiving all of that of people like suffering with years of insomnia, have like tried a lot of different things, and then we're sleeping like one two hours a night, and then progressively as soon as you're providing the nutrients that your body needs to, to calm down, they are able to progressively start sleeping like four, six, eight hours a night. Improve their sleep overall, which yeah. is... And even like yeah. people that don't have a uh, sleeping issue. So for example, I, I, I don't have any sleeping issues, but I used to travel. I used to travel a lot, right? I'm the co-founder of an expanding brand. I'm also from Brazil, my family. Uh, it's in the other side of the ocean. So if I'm struggling with jet lag, or even when I like go, have to sleep in a flight, I take Z's because it helps me adjust with the time difference, and it helps me have like a deep and restorative sleep. So the deep sleep is the key benefit of the of Z's, would you say? Both things. So it diminishes the on-site time for for your body to sleep because a lot of people like they go to bed and they spend like hours before to, they are able to to, uh, to sneeze to sneeze. Yes. And also the other benefit is is staying in the deep sleep. I will tell you something. My problem hasn't been actually sleeping, going to bed, or or deep sleeping in any way, but it's pretty much about the, the the quality of the sleep itself. Like when you wake up, you know that you had a really good night's sleep or you would wake up knowing like, oh, I still feel like so tired, you know? It has nothing to do with the actual, the time of when you sleep or not. Like I could sleep two hours, but they could be so deep that I could just like function 24 more hours without the need for anything else. Well, maybe not to that extent, but anyway. <laughs> but sometimes I will sleep my six hours, which I know that my body needs, and still it feels not enough, you know? It feels as if like, it's not that it's not enough, it's enough, I wake up, I don't feel sleepy anymore, but I just feel tired, you know? I feel really tired from sleeping. So uh, I'm gonna give it a try, I'm gonna see how it works really. I'm, I'm quite keen to, uh, to try it. Yeah, you, yeah. you touch in, in a very important topic, honestly, because sometimes there is even anxiety about like the literature around sleep. They say, oh my God, if I don't sleep eight hours a night, I haven't slept enough. But it's way more important the quality yeah. of that sleep than anything. Because sometimes yeah. people, they spend like 10 hours, but they didn't have like restorative sleep and yeah. the amount of sleep that one needs is exactly the measurement that you said is how you feel do you feel replenished do you feel yeah. full of energy or not great well so, let me know how it goes no i will i will write you a review as well <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do have some points i mm. want to talk about sleep as well it's sometimes it's so much more about even how deep you sleep it could be like when are you sleeping yeah so actually our body heals the most between i would say 10 30 until 2. so if you get to bed and from 10 30 to 2 and then you wake up at like 4 you've got majority of your healing in place but if you go to sleep at 12 you miss out on two hours of healing yeah. so you can look at like when are you sleeping yeah. as well yeah, yeah definitely definitely these are the things that a lot of people have actually tried to reprogram themselves during this lockdown to get better 
type of program like their own training their own exercise and kind of shifted in, in ways they never expected it to be uh, but I'm the kind of people that now trying to jump on that wagon trying to get my health and wellness in check again so uh, so yeah I'm, I'm putting myself a new schedule for sleeping at 10 30 11 yeah. max waking up at 5 getting my exercises in check but yeah we'll see how that goes I'm very keen on trying the super super blend proteins and the performance one the performance protein so these are new formulas that you guys have have came up with for is it a whey protein with the the elements of because a lot of people say like these powders or these supplements might be just whey with added stuff or extracts from different things how would you explain it how would you describe yours yeah, it's good that you mention whey because a lot of people have this association with like protein powder being whey protein, which is not always necessarily okay, the case. Yeah. So for we are like a hundred percent plant based company, so we don't use the dairy products. And without going into much details on like manufacturing and how you make protein powders, whey comes from the watery liquid that it's a soup product when you make cheese. So when you make cheese, you have the curd and you discard the, the watery liquid mm. and then you extract whey protein from that. And I know that because my dad has a dairy factory back in Brazil. Oh, really? okay. And in Brazil, what they do with this watery liquid is to feed the pigs. Uh, because it has protein, so they just use as a form of enriching what the pigs eat. And plant-based protein, what we use in our products, they come from plants. In fall, we use organic pea, hemp and brown rice. And using these three varieties of plant-based protein, you have a full profile of amino acids. So one of like the, the things that people normally, they, they criticize about plant-based powders is that it doesn't provide the nine essential amino acids compared to whey protein. But if you have a milk-sourced plant-based protein, which is the case of organic pea, brown rice, and hemp, mm -hmm. then you have all the nine yeah since from amino acids that your body is not able to produce. So it's protein the same way, but it's a different source. And then when we talk about different sources of protein, it's also important to understand on what your protein comes as a package. When it comes from animals, it also comes with some sort of toxins, and depending if you're buying organic or non organic, you know, we all know the amount of antibiotics, the amount of stuff that cows they go through. And when it comes from plants, yes, we can argue if it's non organic, you can have pesticides. But when it comes from plants, it also comes with phytonutrients, it also comes with antioxidants, it also comes with fiber. So that's why we went full on on plant-based protein and we do not use whey in our Fantastic. formulations. And um, what we understand from our um, consumers is that over 80% of them are not vegans. They are actually people who are looking into ways of diminishing the amount of animal protein that they have and are looking for alternatives. Healthier and, alternatives. Yes, and, um, and switching your protein mm. shake from whey to a plant-based one is a very simple switch. And the reason that we come up with form, it was because we wanted to be an alternative that you feel that you're not compromising on science, so you have all the nutrition there, but you also you're not compromising on taste, because normally, vegan protein tastes gross because it was made from a whey brand that just realized the rise of veganism and they want to come up with like a range of products 
to attend that new market, but the main source of income comes from Lay. So they don't need to spend a lot of time developing it. On the contrary, from us, it's our main brand. We are always going to be a 100% plant-based brand. So we need to make sure it tastes good. And there are the vegan brands in the market. They were targeting the already converted, the people who were already vegans. So if you have already made the decision, either from an ethical, from an environmental, or from like animal welfare perspective, that you're not going to eat animal products, then if your protein doesn't taste very good, you know, it's life, you made that decision. But for us, we want to offer an alternative for the people to make that switch from whey to plant-based protein. Yeah, and I think you did really well because clearly there's a lot of demand on your products and a lot of people are actually uh, talking really well about it. So whoever have tried it have definitely recommended it. Um, but away from all these things, and I don't want to delve into the logistics of how you're actually doing it, how has it been like? How has the journey been like? Uh, of, of form? Yeah, how has it been like since you guys decided, let's do so, this? So form is the brainchild of Damien Su, who mm -hmm. is my co-founder and our CEO. And uh, his desire was, you know, Wei didn't, he's not vegan. But Wei didn't agree with him. It made him like bloated and like acne. And at the same time, he never saw like a supplement brand that was appealing to him. So then he decided to make one. And in the process of like coming up with form, he was looking into um, different PR and communications agencies to help him with the concept, with the communication strategy. And he went to like the biggest uh, communications agencies in London. And one of the ladies who were there said, you should speak to Natalia because at that time, I had quit my job as a PR director. In the From country. that same agency? No, I, okay. I, I used to work in another agency. I, she was just someone that I met, she was not even really close to her, but I'm really grateful that she did that. Um, and then she said, so Natalia used to work in PR, she has like 10 years of experience in communications and she's very passionate about plant-based nutrition, you should speak to her. And at that stage, he, he didn't have like the brand, he didn't have the plans and we spent about 18 months on the development of the formulation of uh, the, the tone of voice, the injury, like the plan of where we want form to be. And it was a very exciting opportunity for me because in the past I would be given like this bottle and say I want this in Vogue, I want this in GQ and the Telegraph. But with the opportunity that I was given, I, I was part of like creating something that is desirable that sells for itself. And from the beginning we have been like, um, I don't like to use the word luck but we have been lucky in a sense that having attracted the right people and having coming up with something that people get it. And within three months of launching, we were already stocking at Planet Organic and we grew into have partnerships with places like Soho House in the UK and Europe we are also now launching in the US in places like Sun Life Organics and we have another stockist there. We are in Dell's Food Organic, we are also in Suffrages and we have an incredible support from press. So if you see the amount of reviews that we have from Tatler to The Telegraph, from The Sunday Times to Men's Health to Women's Health and also the support of digital influencers who talk about the brand because they really love the products. We don't pay for posts. We rely on genuine endorsements because I believe in the supplement industry. It's a crowded market. Isn't it's a it? crowded market and it's a market that plays on people's insecurities. So 
it tells people that they're not good enough, it tells people that they're not worthy unless they have a six pack, and it's always trying to push products into them. And we have a completely different approach. We have an approach of empowering people to make their own decisions and providing the solution. And we don't do like before and after uh, pictures. We, if you look at our feed, if you look at our website, we have a more holistic approach into nutrition because it also allows us to have a much bigger audience than a small audience who are already like converted and like obsessed about fitness and nutrition. And, and that's what it's interesting, is, you know, when, when you come up with products, when you come up with brands, you do have a strategy, you do have like a, a communications plan, but until it's executed, you don't really know what is gonna happen. And the surprise that we had, and, and I guess it is a good surprise, is that if you look at our customer database, if you use that the user generated content on our social media platforms, you can see that form is consumed from ballerinas to bodybuilders and everyone in between. And it, that's not just like a, a catchy phrase, that is the reality. You, you will find this profile of people uh, using the products. And we are an independent startup. We don't have like massive budgets. We always have been one of using resources in a creative way and also being very lucky to have attracted people like for example Vanessa who has a different um, background and skills that brings and elevates everything that we do and every time that we hire we are a small team but we're always looking for talent that have like a T T like range of skills, so it's someone that knows a little bit of everything, but has an in-depth knowledge An in anchor. certain area. Yeah. yeah, amazing. It's it's very interesting thing, and I would like to ask you a little bit more about that actually, if you don't mind. No. So, so you are a startup that is growing, and you're going through recruitment, as you mentioned. So, what is your favorite question that you actually ask all candidates? Do you have such one? Well, we, it's interesting that you ask that because with our recruitment process, we first start with an application. So we have like a questionnaire uh, with about like 10 questions. And with those questionnaires, the, what we're trying to understand is how the person thinks and if aligns with what we think. And it also what we are trying to look, it is someone who can bring something to the table that we haven't thought of. Great. So what are the challenges? What are the challenges? It's all great and rosy and amazing. And I know that you do your job really well. You know, like clearly what you guys have been doing with the brand, with the press, with the way that you present the company is amazing. But as a co-founder, it's not a, a smooth sale. It's always ups and downs. It's a roller coaster sometimes. So, I think the the challenge that I I would say that um, I have as a personal challenge, like I have a personal challenge of making whey protein irrelevant, and this is a massive industry. It's an industry that worth like millions with like really, 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 really big players and companies that have like bigger budgets than we have, right? And, and, and that is a challenge, you know, being competing with like a big brand and sometimes to stop and appreciating what you have achieved without having the amount of staff, the amount of money the amount of resources, the amount of influence that they have is a challenge. Um, the challenge of like always wanting more, always wanting things to be ready sooner than they are with like product development, for example. The challenges of having to face a lot of no's before you get a yes. And, but I think we manage it like 
Well, I, I don't know. Vanessa, who works with me, probably can say more than we do. But although we are always striving for success, we, we don't allow comparison to deem our light or what we are already doing. And, and I think that's, that's very important. Um, and also grow in a sustainable way, in an organic way, and also with integrity and keeping your values um, without jeopardizing your values. And I didn't leave an industry where I was not like feeling fulfilled to recreate the same thing. I didn't leave an industry where I was like feeling highly stressed because of how things were managed to recreate the same environment. So potentially doing things the way we believe it to be right. And we have one of our courses that we are quick thinkers that don't rush, which I also think it's important because a lot of like these startups they have this uh, concept that they have like to grow, 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 and sometimes if they get VC investment, it, it, it's like someone who has like a feet on your neck, putting like even like more pressure on you. And we don't have any of that. So you're self-funded. We have investment. Oh, okay. We so we after like two years after we launched, we got an investment, and it was not necessary because we need. The money we could have been going but the money also accelerated our growth and it was like a key partnership because of like the introductions but we, we have turned down uh, a lot of people who, who came uh, to knock on our doors with big checks the same way that we also have turned down like big retailers that some brands would be like dying to be in because it wasn't right for the brand mm. so for us it's always thinking about the long term than the immediate gain and that has always been a principle that we, we we value and we follow absolutely i think that that has a lot to do with your input i believe because it's all about the brand and protecting the brand because ultimately it might be your your uh, most expensive assets right so making sure that it's built and nourished in a certain way and maintained in that way is very important so uh, how do you do it well i can again i cannot take the credit for everything right it's it's three of us so i'm more responsible for communications brand awareness sponsorship partnerships damien is the ceo and i guess for him it's probably even way more difficult to make the decisions because all the decisions that I make, I always stand from a brand perspective. I always stand on a values perspective. I'm no one dealing with accounts. I'm no one dealing with the balance spreadsheet. He's the one doing that. So I think big credit to him to be able to look at the numbers, to be able to look at our growth, drive our growth that we have been growing month by month since we first launched and understanding that the growth that we are we, the rate of growth we are we are achieving it's good enough that we don't need to put more pressure on ourselves on on the team and in detriment of the brand he's also very brand savvy he he has a great eye for luxury he has a great eye for experience and everything. The same thing for, for Pete, who is another co-founder of us, who is in charge of our logistics, making sure we have the packaging, making sure we have the products and everything is well in the manufacturing. But it, it's about we all being aligned. And sometimes we disagree. It's not that we always agree on everything, but even when we disagree, I think there is always a way of thinking okay let's try that and if it doesn't work it's not going to be the end of the world as long as, as the learn. core not only learn but as like the core it, it doesn't damage it's like the core principles of the brand and why we are doing what we do amazing 
that's that's really great it's um it's interesting to hear your story from your end and uh, definitely uh damien the, the the ceo was he was he the one that came up with the idea first yes, right yes and then he started building the team around the idea and you guys became the co-founders of it yeah he, he was yeah. always the co-founder he's okay. the original one he's the one who brought dr adam collins our head of nutrition on board he was the one who brought pete on board he was the one who brought myself on board. So how big is the team now? So full time. <laughs> People never believe when we say that, but full time, it's now five of us. And then we have, of course, our doctor Adam Collins. He's a head of, nutri- uh, head of research at Surrey University, so he's not full time. And Pete as well, he's actually not full time. And we have contractors that work for us, like our digital uh, marketing agency and that. But full time so how are we doing your marketing? Is it like all contracted to agencies, to no, ads or? No, we like Vanessa, for example, designs a lot of our ads. Having someone with multiple, putting her multiple hats on is the key, isn't it? Yes, she does. You know, she, and I think that's what, what is, interesting about being a startup environment and any founder who is not like taking fully advantage of having a close contact with your audience it's like losing an immense opportunity of gaining insight and Vanessa for example she deals with our customers on a day-to-day basis so when she creating an advert she already understands how people are perceiving the brands and what they need to know. When we are thinking about new product development, again, she's receiving this email. So everything that we do, because we are a small team, can be um, very well thought and well executed. Coming back from when I worked in, in a massive corporation, sometimes you don't even know um, what someone in logistics or product development is doing until something is already ready and yeah. is on your desk. Great. So, how's it been like for you, Vanessa? How many months have you been here? Been there? <laughs> Seven months now. Seven Started, months. Started, yeah, beginning of December. It's Amazing. been great. Yeah, it's really, really great experience. Have you had startups before or was it your first startup? I did work in a startup before, but it's mm. a completely different industry. Yeah. Um, it's been, yeah, really, really great. Like, just doing loads of different roles. It's how I thrive myself, so it just fit really well with me, my lifestyle. That's yeah. good, that's good. So you guys do a lot of activities together, definitely you have your own socials or at the end of the week, these well, things. <laughs> no anymore, do yeah. we? But we're actually excited that next week we are going uh, for like uh, a lunch with everyone in the team because we also recently hired, so just before lockdown, we hired a new content editor who only had time to pick up his laptop and go home. And then during lockdown, I hired another person. So, and we we, we never met. So we have been working like through Zoom, through email, through Slack. So next week, uh, we're gonna have like lunch with like six of us to you know just to, no, to interact face to face no it sounds good it's definitely like important to get to know your team sometimes on a, on a face-to-face element what do you think about working from home like becoming the new, the new norm a lot of businesses and people like they are really keen on moving to that model completely what do you think about that? I'm, I'm well, from a co-founder perspective. Yeah. I, I think that there are like pros and cons to mm. everything. And this like past nearly four months that we have been in lockdown has been a very productive period for form. Like we achieved loads in this time. And I guess it's because you have time that you don't waste in meaningless meetings, or like traveling from one way to another so you can be like really focused on what you're doing and in addition to that we have like proactive people who are able to work on their own but of course having a collective group of people interacting uh, sharing ideas it's very important so the way that we are going to go forward we are going to keep that element of working from for a couple of days a week 
and we also keep like a few days a week where everyone comes to the office so we have like that moment of interaction and we think that's it's a good balance for mm -hmm. people to still have like the freedom of working from home on their own schedule and we we never like measure um like the productivity levels of people by you know if they're working from nine to five but what it is that they are delivering and what it is that they're doing how does it helps our growth and i think that that's the way of looking and also be aware of the fact that you're not like overworking people you're not like making them um dream at work because then the quality of work is not going to be the same so as an example with our um, content editor we discuss okay how how many articles a week it is a feasible target for you is it five is it ten is it four so if it's four we'd rather that you do four but these four articles are very good then just putting like a massive number just for the sake of like getting more from people yeah absolutely i think it's the key thing is the quality of the of the of the work and how much the person that is delivering that work is enjoying it during that process because they might deliver something that is great but later on they might just not because they put everything in the first time and they felt that pressure to just deliver it so um yeah, I, I can I can really connect with that. Have you had to had any kind of have you had to make any difficult decisions in your team that did not really work really well at some well, point? Well, with teams or, or with the company, I think um, you know with every single decision there is. For example, when we decided to move into compostable packaging, right? Mm -hmm. Our products are, have compostable packaging. And we decided to remove the scoops. We used to have plastic scoops in the in the pouches. And when we decided to have that, we still receive emails of people complaining because there is no plastic scoop inside. We get like to the point of someone in Finland asking us to post a plastic scoop to Finland because he cannot use table spoons or a scale. To make sure it has like 20 or 40 grams. Have you tried a corn? A pla uh, yeah, a we, corn? we tried. We, we use some things, but it gets lost mm. in, 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 the, in the thing. And it's not like useless thing. Like people can just use tablespoons, honestly. And, and sometimes you just have like to say, no, we are not going to send. Because customer service is something that is very important for us. Customer retention and we treat our customers as we want to be treated so we are like a very much a yes company who are going to teach you how to like your pro our products and if you don't like it you can return if something goes wrong with your delivery we arrange something immediately we are very much a yes company but sometimes you have like to make the difficult decision of making someone upset by saying no but you have to, to do it and, and I think that's the, the role of a leader to have clarity on what it is that is important to you and know that some of your decisions are not going to be good for someone but not everyone gonna like the yeah, same thing yeah. you can't please everyone absolutely yeah no, you can't yeah makes perfect sense um it was a really great pleasure speaking with you um if there's anything else you would like to talk about, I'm happy to, uh, to chat about it. But if, uh, if not, then uh, I, I really wish you guys all the best in your next uh, few months because clearly you are on a trajectory for uh, growth and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how, how this will evolve. Do you have any, sorry, actually on a, on, a, on a closing note, do you have any announcements or any kind of things that you guys are working on at the moment that you'd like to share with us? We do, but I cannot share with you. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that, uh, you know, I would like to say thank you and, and appreciate this opportunity. Um, but as we're talking about startups, new business, I, I always like to, especially in the wellness environment, I always like to, 
to share a message for new companies or even with consumers, the importance of thinking of the wellness of others. And from the beginning, we always had that principle of with every product sold, we help a family in need. And we are the only protein uh, supplement brand that is certified as a B corporation and it's a certification that accreditates business that are using a brand as a force for good. And I think everyone in the industry should have that inspiration. If you have the luxury of opting if you're going to have like 20 grams, 30 grams of protein added into your porridge, or if you have the luxury of having a supplement and being sleeping in a comfortable bed, I think it's our universal responsibility to do something for others who do not have uh, the same privilege. And this is something that I always feel um, passionate about sharing because if you might be listening and you're looking into setting up a new business, consider that into your business plan from day one. And if you're listening as a consumer, support the brands that are doing good work in the world because we are fighting a big fight against companies that have like way more money but are only prioritizing their profits. So support the brands that are prioritizing people and are prioritizing the planet. Amazing. Very inspirational and very, uh, very interesting. Thank you so much. It Thank was you. a great pleasure meeting you both and I really wish you all the best. Mm -hmm.